Okay, so um, we're doing something just a little different this Sunday. I was kind of guided by spirit, and I love the idea. Um, as ministers, you know, Thanksgiving service, which is what this is, the service before Thanksgiving, we always talk about gratitude and what we're grateful for. And, and you all, I know we live in gratitude. And as metaphysical Christians, you can't help but be grateful <laughs> because the miracles abound. But as ministers, one thing that we are particularly grateful for are all of the stories of healing. Stories where we can rise into that space of transformation to be lifted above where we currently are. And that just fills us with hope and we just love them. So um, three of us, Cheryl, Patrick and I, are gonna share our favorite healing story from the Aquarian Gospel this morning. So I hope you'll just be blessed and be open to receive. Are you ready? Yes. Miss yeah. Cheryl Province. <laughs> <laughs> well, the favorite, one of my favorite stories in the Aquarian Gospel is the story of the little girl at the healing fount. And um, so Jesus is in Persia, and there's a spring and a healing fountain, and they believe that once a year their God makes these waters to be able to heal them. And so there's all manner of people waiting around the spring at this time of year. And so there's deaf people and dumb people and blind people and people that can't walk. And Jesus stands in the midst of them and says, Behold the spring of life. These waters that will fail are honored as a special blessing of your God. From whence do healing virtues come? Why is your God so partial in his gifts? Why does he bless the spring today and then tomorrow take away all the blessings? A deity of power could fill these waters with healing virtue every day. So he says, hear me, this virtue of this fountain is not a special gift of God. Faith is the healing power of every drop of all the waters of this spring. He who believes with all his heart that he will be made whole by washing in this fount will be made whole when he has washed, and he may wash at any time. So he says, let everybody just go in, plunge in now. You don't have to wait. And so all the people rushed and scrambled to get in there to beat each other, to be the first one in there, because they were afraid that once they got in, the waters wouldn't last. The healing powers still wouldn't last. And so Jesus saw a little girl off to the side who was weak, and there was no one there to help her to the waters. And he approached her, and he says, Why do you sit and wait? Why aren't you rushing in there? And she says, I need not haste. The blessings of my Father in the sky are measured not in tiny cups. They never fail. Their virtues are the same forevermore. When those whose faith is weak and who must haste to wash for fear their faith will fail, have all been cured, these waters will be just as powerful for me. Then I can go and stay a long, long time within these blessed waters of the spring. And Jesus said, Behold, a master soul. She came to earth to teach men the power of faith. And so he says, <clears throat> he lifted up the child in his arms and he said, Why wait for anything? The very air we breathe is filled with the balm of life. Breathe in this balm of life in faith and be made whole. Then the child breathed in the balm of life in faith and she was well. And then all the people marveled at what they saw and what they heard. And they said, this man must surely be the God of health made flesh. And Jesus said, the fount of life is not a little pool. It is as wide as the spaces in the heavens. The waters of the fount are love. The potency is faith. And he who plunges deep into the living springs in living faith may wash away his guilt and be made whole and free from sin. And I love that story about the little girl because it shows the wisdom of the child. Our children are so wise and ably, yet she has the capacity and openness to be taught by spirit, to be taught by the Christ to learn greater. And it reminds me to take the limits off God. 
and off myself. It's a lesson on to be able to expand our beliefs and expand our faith and expand our ability to receive. So if we just go back to the basics of what we truly believe as metaphysical Christians, that God is omniscient, all-knowing, God is omnipotent, all-powerful, and God is omnipresent, everywhere present, that all the attributes of God are available everywhere instantly to us. So if we truly believe that and had faith in that, wouldn't it make sense that we could just breathe where we are and have a change occur in our physical body, in our mental body, in our emotional body, in our spiritual body? It's just a simple act that's just so powerful. And, of course, the level of healing would be based on my level of faith and belief. So I just think this, this is a wonderful story, especially for Thanksgiving and coming into the holidays, that it's important for us to remember that we can breathe right where we are. We don't have to go to the mountaintop or uh, do anything special, that just while we're out in our day, we can breathe and breathe in that God love. Breathe in that and ask that our faith be quickened and expanded so we can breathe in the balm of life so that we know that God is all around us. And when we breathe, then we're with God. So. It's chapter 41 in the Aquarian Gospel. <coughs> now Cindy's going to share a story. Thank you, Cheryl. That was one of my favorites as well. Mm -hmm. The one that I was guided to share with you today is um, in chapter 130. They're all fabulous, aren't they, all these beautiful stories? All right. Um, this is a, a story about uh, Jesus and a, a dad. Uh, the, Jesus and three of the disciples had been out and about, and nine of the disciples had been working in a city healing people. And so the nine apostles who went not with Jesus tried to heal an epileptic child who, who was obsessed and they had failed and the people were waiting for the coming of the Lord. When Jesus came, the father of the child knelt before him and implored his help. He said, my master, I beseech you that you will look in pity on my son, my only child. He is an epileptic child and suffers grievously. And this is after the nine were unable to heal him. Sometimes, the father said, he falls into the fire and is burned. Again, he falls into the water and is like to drown. And many times a day, he falls and grinds his teeth and foam pours from his mouth. I took my child to your disciples and they failed to give relief. And as he spoke, a servant brought the child forward. And instantly he fell upon the ground. He foamed and writhed in agony. And then Jesus said to the dad, How long has he been troubled thus? And the father said, From infancy. We have sought in many lands for help, but found it not. But I believe that you can speak the word and heal my son. At this point in the Father's journey, he represents what each one of us does. We seek and seek and seek for anything outside ourselves to help us. We look for that magic pill or that a string we can hold on to, or whatever is available outside ourselves. We seek and seek. And for this man, from the child's infancy, he was not able to find it. But he said, I believe in my heart. And Jesus said to him, Faith is the power of God. All things are possible for him who in his heart believes. And with those words, Jesus made the man go inside. You've looked outside all this time. Do you have faith? Do you really have faith? Go inside and see what is there. And the man said in tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Help me. I think this is probably one of the most moving for me because it represents us, all of us, we do want to believe. We want to believe 
But until we have within us the capacity to hold in belief what we believe we want, it cannot come. And we of ourselves cannot always create that belief. Do you know what I'm saying? We of ourselves can only know what we know and see what we see and have faith to the level that we've experienced. And then we have to open to God. If we're going to bring in something bigger than we know, we have to open to God. Do you understand? Every miracle that you have stretches your ability to believe, doesn't it? And when you have that first miracle, you go, whoa, that was a good miracle. That was certainly God working because I didn't do it. And then we tend to forget it. Then we get rock against the hard spot once again. We go, oh no, I need to change this. We look in the outer, how can I change this? Somebody give me a, a, some help, please. Throw me something. I need help. And then we go within. What do you believe is possible? I believe, but... And then the miracle comes back. Do you remember last time? Do you remember last time it happened? Remember last time when, when God lifted you up and you had your miracle? And you breathe in that faith, and that faith now becomes a part of your bottom line faith. You go, yeah, yeah, but this is a lot bigger. Okay. All right, well, let's bring it together, and let's open for God again. God is never used up. Your faith should never stop growing. Until you know that you know you're a child of God and can walk to the other side at will, your faith should never stop growing. So the Father said the prayer that we all come to. Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Grow in me. Grow in me what I need to receive what you can give. And when he said that, Jesus spoke the word of power, and the epileptic child lay in a swoon. He didn't breathe. And the people said the child is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and said, Arise, and he arose and spoke. The people were amazed, and many said, This is surely a man of God, for no such power was ever given to man. Isn't that similar to what they said in Cheryl's story? Oh, this is surely God, because we do not have the power ourselves. So instead of believing the man could open to God to receive, they once again put the power outside into the hands of Jesus. And he did have the power. He did walk one with God. But it was the Father's heart that opened to receive the gift. So, the man took it and received it. God can be a part of every desire of our heart when we open up and let God in. If you would have, if you could have healed yourself, you already would have. If you could have manifested the dream you hold, it would already be here. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. If you of yourself could have made it so, it would be made so. We dream bigger. We need bigger healing. Believe. Pull your miracle faith together. Pull that bucket of faith together. And ask for the greater. And create a space where I believe, help thou my unbelief, God. And get ready to receive. And now Mr. Patrick's turn to share his favorite story. My favorite story is in chapter 150, and it's about <clears throat> Bartimaeus, the blind man. That's a big one, isn't it? Blind? We're uh, really looking outside of ourselves for that one. So it's in chapter 150, and uh, Bartimaeus is sitting by the side of the road. And uh, a group of people come walking by, and he's sitting there with other people. He goes, who's that? Who's that? And, the, and they say, that's the Lord. And, and so Bartimaeus starts yelling out, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And, and the people around him say, shut up. Be quiet. <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, have mercy on me. He's yelling out. He's not going to be quiet. Jesus says, What's, who's that, who's that? And they said, oh, that's Bartimaeus, a blind man. Well, bring him to me. So the people help Bartimaeus up, and they start taking him over there, and they say, okay, now, Bartimaeus, be joyful now. We're taking you to the Lord. You know, like, they, they're going to tell him what's up now. And so they take him there, and he get him up, 
And so Bartimaeus, he rips off his cloak and he runs over to Jesus. And Jesus says, well, what would you have? He said, I, I would have my sight back. Open my eyes that I might see. Jesus says, look up. Lift your vision up. Gets him looking up. And by looking up, he was healed. He received his sight. And everybody said, as in the other ones, well, this is really a powerful healer, isn't it? Bartimaeus is, uh, once again, we're all the people in all these stories. Sometimes we have that, that faith and knowing of a child. Sometimes we have that uh, faith that needs a little bit of growing. And, and then this one here, I think Bartimaeus is, is really uh, reflective of a lot of us too, because um, what are we blind to in our life? Uh, things that we aren't going to look at. What do we turn a blind eye to? Do you see? And, and what happens is then we kind of just sit there and wait. Bartimaeus would just sitting on the side of the road waiting. So, so he's just waiting. But he has an awareness now. He has this, he's heard of the Christ, this higher consciousness, this thing. So when he hears it's him, I am going to go there. This is where I'm going to go. I'm not going to go outside again. I'm going to the Christ. So he runs to him. He takes off his cloak. Our clothes are our identity. And they were really the identity of people back there. They could tell what clan you came from, where you live, whatever. But if we're blind to something or we turn a blind eye uh, to anything, uh, isn't that who we are? Isn't that our identity? So he's literally taking off his identity as a blind man, and he's going to the Christ and lifting up his vision. Action steps. Look up. Raise your vision. Don't just keep looking at what is. You've got to lift your vision to see what can be. You're blind in life right now, and all of us are blind to something. And once we begin to lift our vision and be open to that transformation of spirit, our eyes are opened. We do hear that voice. We do see clearly. He ran to Jesus, a new man. He looked up and he received his sight. And uh, to, to look at this um, personally in our lives, Sometimes we have to get up and take those steps if we want to change. Because we can wait and wait and wait. And worry and worry and worry. And have that same experience. Or we can get up to that idea, that new inspiration. And what did race consciousness tell him when he sought that higher awareness? Shut up. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Has anyone ever heard that from the people around them when they wanted to change? <laughs> oh, everyone raises their hand. And you know what? If we're connected with our heart and we have that belief and that faith, we keep going. We take the steps. We change our identity to who we want to be to what we want to become. And I think that's the, the beauty of Bartimaeus. He maybe did not know, but he was open to know. And he was open to, to, to follow. And he was open to change. And when he got the guidance, he followed the guidance. And then he could see. All these stories are, are, are really cool. And the little girl, to, to have that inner faith and inner knowing, not polluted yet, not listening to race consciousness yet. We're the children of God. We've got to go to that place of, of faith that Cindy's talking about that's within us all. And then grow it. Grow it. Expand our experiences, our blessings, and our teachers. We're not alone. Spirit's with us. And as we go to spirit, we will be strengthened in that knowing, I am, I can. 
And then when we are in that Bartimaeus state of consciousness, we're, we're blind to something that's really our teacher. We don't want to look at it. We connect with that higher self, that Christ in nature, and look. And you know what? It'll disappear. We'll say to that mountain, bye-bye, and we'll tumble into the sea because we've had that faith. And then we demonstrated our faith. Faith is awesome. It's that belief. <clears throat> but what we teach here are prayers are the wings of faith. Prayers are the wings of faith. We've got a song here, and it's very nice and fun. My words are prayers. My thoughts are prayers. My deeds are prayers. Do you see, we don't have to just get locked into uh, a rote prayer that's been handed down for thousands of years. It's that daily living, living that faith, stepping out in faith, knowing in faith, and the transformations that come. Every one of these stories was a demonstration of faith. And every one of the people took an action step. An action step of not having to follow race consciousness into the limitations of a pool. To know the unlimited nature of God that we live and move and have our being in. Another person took that action step of, I'm going to listen and I am going to go within. I'm going to connect with that higher energy. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask. I'm going to receive. And Bartimaeus had an awakening and, he, and he, he followed that guidance and he got up and walked. And he was ready to shift and his eyes were opened. All these stories are our story. We may have had that experience. We may be going through one of them right now. We'll probably go through one of them. But to remember who we are, that we are the sons and daughters of God. God is with us always. Omnipresent. God's all-powerful, omnipotent. God's omniscient, all-knowing. So we connect with that energy and take that next step. So let's go within. I want you to just close your eyes and, and breathe. And let's breathe with intention to breathe in God's love. So as you breathe in, take a nice deep breath and we're gonna breathe in God's love. And just feel God's love filling you now, moving through you now. And as God's love moves through us now, we ask that this love cleanse the temple. We breathe in God's love and we, we ask that thoughts, beliefs, patterns that are less than loving be cleared. We ask that that which no longer serves us is cleared. Breathing in God's love, <coughs> feeling that love and pure potential, we ask that all limitations be cleared. And just breathe in God's love and feel that warm, radiant energy moving through your body now. And just know that God's love is filling the cells of my body now. God's love is filling the cells of my body now. God's love is expanding my unique energy now. God's love is bringing me into harmony with the presence, with the power, and the wisdom of God now. And just breathe and allow these energies of, of God to, to flow through you now. As we cleanse the temple and, and rebuild it, with that foundation stone of faith. And then knowing of the, the steps that we are to take, all we need to do is ask. If there's a, a situation or experience in your life right now that you're ready to transcend, 
or shift or change. Become aware of that. And just breathe in God's love, God's wisdom, God's power. It has to be shown. It has to be shown what your next step is. It can be as simple as just giving yourself permission to expand and to accept your unique nature. Or perhaps be made aware of an action step to strengthen that faith muscle. Ask, and you shall receive. You are the beloved child of our Heavenly Father. So just breathe in God's love consciously and feel God's love moving to you and through you and now radiating out. And just feel the energy in this room just growing and expanding with that aliveness of light. And know that you are one with the light and one with our Heavenly Father. So just breathe. Feel and know I am with you always. And just gently open your eyes. Everybody feel loved? As we go forth this week, uh, open up your aquarium, browse through it, and I bet you'll open up to your favorite story. And then ask, what is this trying to show me? And you will be shown. Yeah, God.